Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And we have to do a disclaimer video because I just found out something that um, I didn't know. And um, what I did, I just automatically assumed that my stock would fit both the 30 cal and the 357. Here's the trick. It fits the 30 cal but not the 357 because I want to go ahead and button mine up and get it done and just use the 357 as my model. Well when I took the 357 apart and put this on there it wouldn't go on there um, there is one slight difference that I didn't have an account I didn't even know it was an issue so we we're going to show you a new product too um, what do you think guys we had we are now trying to make a sportster style stock that actually mounts to this block so this is going to be an attachment so it just slides on you got your two set screws and then you got a cap screw that goes in here and screws that right in where the picatinny rail used to mount so um, we haven't got everything completely nailed down um, Something's a little off here, so we need to do some adjustments, but for the most part, this is what we're making as an attachment. So let me put the gun down. And um, show you on this block here. So basically it's just an attachment that attaches that and makes it a full sportster stock now i haven't completely finished trimming this yet uh i've got it to where it fits uh we got a few little trimming to do just like you guys i gotta trim my parts too so um but i think that looks pretty good we may try to adjust this and cut that corner off a little bit or round it somehow uh, I'm not sure how we want to do that yet, but for now, this is the prototype. This is only at 10%, and it, it's light as a feather. Um, and if I was able to do these blocks with less infill, then it would be lighter too. But I want this to be solid. I don't want screws pulling through honeycombed plastic, so... You know, if you got a solid piece, you got less of a chance of that happening. So, this is the new attachment we're working on. This is not nailed down yet. It's getting close. And, uh, we're going to offer these also. So, basically, if you have this stock, a bison stock, you can just buy that as an attachment and have two different looks for your gun. This slides right on. Uh... On another note, we're talking about these uh, buffer tubes. And I made this. This is what I come up with. This here used to be a tank or a tube, air tube, for one of these challengers. Uh, one of my subscribers cut about eight inches off of his and made it shorter. And as a good faith gesture he sent me that barrel and I went and measured it and the threads or the size on the inside and outside was perfect for what I wanted to use it for so I took the tap and tapped out how much I needed and cut them half inch long and then I just drilled a hole in it instead of doing the uh, uh, castle nut we got a hole in the side of it that you can use for a spanner wrench. So that's all you really need for, you know, a spanner wrench. Any spanner wrench that works on all the rest of them fits this one too. 
So, uh, but that's my new uh, nuts for the, uh, this one's one of mine, uh, one of my buffer tubes. And it fits on there nice and pretty. So, there you have it. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys that there is a slight difference between the 357 that I didn't know about and um, I'll show you on my 357 what I'm talking about. <clears throat> this is my 357 and I'll bet you any amount of money that this stock would look really good with that train. That would look pretty badass. But in order to do it, I'd have to make a special train that was long enough. Just thinking outside the box. But anyway, I'll get off track here. On this part right here, this block has a gap of about seven millimeters between this and this. The only difference is it's hitting the edge right here and won't allow it to go up in the stock that I've got on for sale. Um, now I could probably take that out in the mill and mill that a little longer. I'd probably end up having to do that. Uh, but for now, the ones that are online are for the 30 cal only. Um, the 30 cal, it's all the same exact size, except I didn't come back long enough to where come up to this because it wasn't necessary in the 30 cal. And that's the one I used as my model. If I would have used this one for my model when I was making the stock, it would have fit right on the 30. This is just a longer little block here. So that's why if you do decide that you want to buy that and you feel like milling it out and you got the means to do it, by all means, all you have to do is just relieve seven millimeter of plastic in the back side of that right in front of this to meet up to this edge right here. And the 357 will fit. Uh, it's a bummer that that happened. I thought they were both identical. So I needed to do this disclaimer to let you know that the ones that I have for sale right now are for the 30 cal only. Um, unless you do the milling or I do the milling. I'll probably end up having to do the milling. The problem I have with milling plastic is it heats up and it starts turning into a gum. And um, it's really hard to mill plastic. Uh, yeah, you could probably do it with a little dry, Dremel sander or whatever. But it would take a lot long time. So, but that's the only difference. Uh, basically, we have a cutout here of that. And what's happening is, let me find something here to point with that's actually sharp. Uh, we use this white sucker. It makes a nice pointer. Basically, what happened is the block on the 30 came to here. Well, this one comes to here. So this is the only part that needed to be milled out. So from now on, I've already adjusted it in my print. I took seven millimeters out of that. So anything that gets printed from now on is gonna be for both, the 357 and the 30 cal. Sorry about that, guys, but uh, I need to let you guys know that so that uh, it's also listed on the post that it is only for the 30 cal and uh, eventually we will have the 357s available because then all of them will fit both. Um, but I just used the 357 to do my modeling, we wouldn't have this issue. <laughs> this would be a video not done. So, um, but it'll go on there. It just won't go down on there in the front. So, that sucks. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, so now I got both my challengers down. Regardless, they both need recited. But let's look at this one more time. This goes on. Slides on there and a screw on the bottom that screws it right to this that uses the exact same screw hole. So I think that looks pretty decent. I think we need to do something up here. Um, do something kind of a slant. The only problem with doing a slant like that is then it's going to require the um, support. And when it starts doing support, it starts messing with the way it looks. It doesn't look nice and smooth and shiny like that. Uh, right now, that I could use that with no problem. Uh, I think that looks pretty decent. I use the barrel band system as a way to hold the front and a screw in the back as a way to hold the back. So then once you get the screw and these two set screws set in, uh, it's not going nowhere and you'll be styling in the woods so this is basically just going to be an attachment and I also have this one I didn't put screw holes in it because this is only 20% infill and I didn't realize I was going to put a Picatinny rail on it but I decided to go ahead and do that so I made a Picatinny rail that is slanted so that it would be parallel with your barrel uh, that will mount here and the new ones after this will have the holes drilled already for me to tap so we can put the Picatinny rail on this so we can hold a bipod so um, but that's the new look I'm working on right now I just it just popped in my head well actually it's been in my head uh, I wanted to do the same thing like this but make the stock for it and, and it may come sooner or later, I don't know. Um, I wanna to try to make a stock that kind of matches that back here. So uh, this is just the beginnings of a new stock build and we get to use the same block. And uh, I'm gonna make these in two different, the one with the bison logo and one that's plain, but it'll have bison on the side and AEA will be on the other side. So, your AEA Challenger. I'm not putting a, a specific uh, caliper number on them because it fits two different guns and it's just too cluttered. So, it's not necessary. So anyway, I hope you guys like that. I think it looks pretty tough. <laughs> uh, yeah, if we make matching stock to go back here, that would look pretty tough. What do you think, guys? Anyway, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And if you ain't having your Trump coffee, shame on you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And to you kids that are listening to me with your daddies, <laughs> your daddies don't know what they're talking about. Only Bob at Bison knows what he's talking about. So you look at your daddy and say, see, I told you so. Bison said so, so it must be true. Anyway, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. You guys have a good one. Later.